This is the Crystal Radio from my first video, and I've made some modifications. As you can see, some things have changed around here. I'm going to make some more. Uh, I've, you know, improved some things like the earphone and so on. And uh, let me show you those construction details so you can decide if you want to put them in your Crystal Radio when you build it. One change I've made is to replace these, I call them fanny stock. Uh, clips uh, on one side with uh, these brass washers. I have bent the upper washer so that when you lay it down on top of the wire and the other washer, it tries to pull the wire in when you tighten it. If you use two flat washers when you tighten it, the wire tries to move out of it tries to squeeze it out of there and it'll pop out of the joint and you can see it's just laying in there really nicely. You put the screw in there, tighten it down and it makes a nice clamp. Put it in a vise, tap it with a hammer, a couple pair of pliers and bend it. But that's all it takes. One of the things I've been working on and I'm still not happy with is the wiper. I've made some improvements on it but still I don't, it's not good enough. Ideally you want the wiper to have a very light touch and to move smoothly and evenly across here. Uh, with this setup you get more pressure as you go towards the center which causes the wiper to bend and then release, bend and release so it's a jerky motion. Uh, not the best. Uh, again I've improved it. Some of the improvements are I have uh, move where the bend is. The bend used to be back here and now I've moved it over to here. Uh, it helps a bit. Uh, the hole I originally had was more of a D shape and it was not uh, it was not smooth. That caused it to jerk also. Uh, there was a sharp edge at the end of the at the end of the wire when I bent it and that was digging into the brass and releasing, digging and releasing, especially when you turn it uh, this way against uh, uh, the uh, point of this, it would dig into the brass and release, dig in and release. Very jerky motion, not good. Uh, I would like to find like a brass grommet to put through here perhaps to make the hole smaller and, and uh, brass moves a little bit more smoothly. The other thing I've done is focus on the screw. Originally I had a screw where the threads went all the way up. That was a bad idea. The, as you move it one way, the uh, the wiper would go inside the threads and go up and then it would bind as it hit the top and when you came back it would snap and whatever so that was not good. So I put a bushing in here. Uh, it helps a bit. Uh, tried a bigger washer, smaller washer. A bigger washer seems to do a little bit better but uh, that's it. I think next time when I do the when I do the wiper I think I will use a brass rod because I can solder it and I will solder the brass rod maybe do a couple washers or something. Uh, to give it a, a smoother thing. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is on some of the older radios what they do is they have a, a piece of wood here that's almost as tall as the almost as tall as the uh, coil and they mount the wire on it like this and then it's pretty much just gravity and a little bit of pressure they use to uh, hold the hold the wiper against the uh, coil. So uh, that's a thought I maybe end up doing that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is clean one of these up because the edges, sometimes they're really sharp edges. Yeah, this one has some pretty sharp edges. Take some sandpaper and a knife and clean this up and uh, sometimes there's a casting mark down here that will really cut your ear. And this one fell off when I got it so I use a little bit of plastic glue to seal it. Um, the other thing is when you're trying to solder these ultra fine wires onto something a lot bigger like I did over here. Uh, make an extender for it. Now there's a trick to that so that it just doesn't break off. A lot of times when you put a solder a thin wire onto a thicker wire like this it'll break real quickly. So let me show you how I did that and that uh, usually works for a long time. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is prep your wire ends and you want some shiny copper and I always cut off maybe about an inch or so especially if the wire has been sitting around for a while or if it's been used, if it's been twisted. Uh, you don't want like broken strands and all that in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist these together. And keeping it 
this short. Keeping it in focus. Okay, so that's about it. Want to get everything all nice and beautiful. And now we're just going to solder those. Try to get my ends tight if I can. There's no point in having a lot of wire sticking in there. Because after this, I'm going to solder it. And I'm going to put shrink wrap on each one of these. I'm going to fold them down and then I'm going to put a bigger piece of shrink wrap over them. So I want everything to be beautiful, compact. I don't want a big bulge in there any more than I have to. Okay, so I'll solder this off camera. I'll be right back. Now you can see what I've got. I've got some uh, two pretty clean solder joints. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off just as short as I can. Don't have any bulge, bulges, don't have any uh, sharp points on me. Don't want any of that. Cause it'll poke through. Okay, so that's it so far. Let's uh, get to the shrink wrap. We're going to need two sizes and I'll get that out here in a second. The first size of shrink wrap we want is something that will just barely fit over these wires. Like this. And like that. There we go. Okay, so got a little bit of wire exposed here, but that's okay. This one's covered well, so. The next size we want is something that will fit over the bulge. So now what I'm going to do is, you see how these wires are kind of bent around like that? That'll give it some a little bit of flexibility if it gets pulled on. So I'm going to tuck these in here and try to push this thing on here, manipulate it every way possible. There we go. Pushing it on, staying in focus. Okay, there we go. And now Make sure you get my lump in the right place, like that. Add some flame. Make sure I get it on there. Okay. I always like to tin the leads. That way you're not always fussing around trying to, you know, they, they get broken off and whatever. So I always like to tin the leads. It gives a better connection. And the other thing I like to do is put a piece of shrink wrap on so that they don't keep splitting. Uh, so anyway, let me go tin it and uh, be right back. And these are pretty well tinned. Uh, no sharp points on, no sharp edges. I like to give myself, you know, like an inch and a half before I do the shrink wrap. That way I can split these and, and hook it to things. So let's shrink the shrink wrap. Okay, and split this. For cleaning this up, what I've done is I've sanded the tip off. These, the, sometimes these have a really sharp edge in here. So I get the sandpaper on the edge, get that worked out of there. Uh, sand it off like this. Yeah, much better. There's a seam. Can you see the seam? If I put my finger there, yeah, you can see the seam right there. Make sure you get that seam off. It doesn't take much, but your ears are really sensitive and you stick something sharp in them and it doesn't feel good. Okay, so that's much better. We have cleaned up our sharp edges on here, uh, glued this on if necessary. We have done our splice attached it to some more robust wire if necessary, made it a little longer. And finally, we have reinforced and uh, tinned the, the connection leads on here, uh, put on something to keep it from splitting some more. And that pretty much finishes up the uh, earphone. Well, there are three improvements for your crystal radio when you build it, the connectors, uh, the wiper, and the earphone. Hope you find them interesting and useful.